Hi everyone, welcome to your progesterone teach video. Um, everyone's been asking for this video, so I decided to make it. Um, I'm gonna go over everything like I do with your IVF meds, but we would rather teach this in the office, so this is just a just in case video, okay? So you should be taught in the office just to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, so as far as your progesterone injection, it is an intramuscular injection. So it's going into your upper outer backside. So I will be giving you this paper, but if you look at this paper here, so if you cut one half of your body into quarters, you're going into this upper outer quarter, okay? So nowhere in the cheeks, nowhere near the spine, okay? So upper outer corner. Everyone thinks they're always gonna hit bone. There is bone behind there, but your muscle is thick enough that you should not ever hit bone. Um, but again, nowhere in the cheeks, nowhere near the spine, okay? So, um, you know, some markers to look at are the top of the crease here. You're going above that and out to the side, okay? Um, another way to look at it is from, if you put your hands on your hips right here, usually your thumb will lie right in this spot. So if you try right now and put your hands on your hips, okay, where your thumb is, that is where you're going, okay? Um, so if you see here in this picture too, in this shaded part, upper, outer, backside, nowhere near the cheeks, nowhere near the spine, okay? So for this medication, you should have received three vials of progesterone and oil. Um, your box may not be pink, it may be white and blue, but either way, it will say progesterone injection, 500 milligrams per 10 ml, okay? Yours may be super clear or may have a yellow tint to it. All of that is fine, it just should not be cloudy, okay? Um, just like all of your other medications, you want to do this in a clean area, you want clean hands. Um, when you go to use this the first time, you're gonna pop the top off. With your alcohol wipes, you're gonna take that off. You're going to wipe the top, okay? Let it air dry. You should have a syringe with a needle already attached. The needle size should either be an 18 gauge, a 20 gauge, or 21 gauge. Sometimes the pharmacy sends you a 3cc syringe with a 22 gauge needle on. We don't use that to draw it because it's a thinner needle and it's harder to draw the medicine out. Um, but in addition to the syringe with needle attached, you should also have separate 22 gauge needles that are one and a half inch long. Um, that is correct for intramuscular injections. If you are um, on the much thinner side, then we will um, send you smaller needles, but generally it's one and a half inch, okay? So what you're gonna do is take this syringe out, okay? And you're gonna draw up one cc of air. You're gonna uncap this, take this, put it into the progesterone vial, turn it upside down. You're gonna inject the air in, and you're gonna draw out past one, okay? Your dose for this medicine is one, but when you do this, you draw out air and micro bubbles. So just draw past one, you can give it a little tick, and then you're gonna push up to that one, okay? You are going to carefully recap this. You can scoop it up like this on a table, okay? And then you're going to twist this big one off, okay? So the pink hubbed needle is never going into your body, okay? You're going to take one of the dark gray hub needles, 22 gauge, you're gonna twist that one on. You're gonna take off the safety cap and then just like if you remember from your menopure, you're gonna push up slowly till you get your own bead of fluid at the tip of the needle, okay? Now you know there's no air in it, it's primed and ready to go. So you can either plan to be giving yourself this injection or you can have someone do it for you. If you're going to be doing this yourself, perfectly fine and easy, you can do it. You can either sit down on something and cross your leg, or you can lean up against something like a, a you know, sturdy table and a wall or something like that. If you are going to be doing this to yourself, like I said, if you sit down, okay, you would just cross your leg over. You're gonna take your alcohol swab. You're gonna wipe the area that you're going into. You're gonna let it air dry. And then you're in your dominant hand, which is generally people's right hand, you're gonna take it just like this, okay? And all you're gonna do is go 
straight in, okay? Once you are in, you won't see any part of that needle, okay? Then you are going to flick back on the plunger, okay? You don't need to pull the plunger out, just a little flick. That will let you know if, in your, your, if you're in a vein or artery. You should not be, um, but it's just a safety check, so it's called aspirating, okay? So you're just gonna do a little flick as long as you don't see any bright red blood. You're just gonna push down on the plunger, okay? It's oil, it's going to go in you slowly. That's perfectly normal. So you're just gonna push down until it's all in. Once you're done, you should have your gauze next to you. You're gonna pull out the needle. You're gonna take gauze and put pressure on the site for about a minute or so. If you're an easy bleeder, keep it there for two minutes. When you go to pull the gauze off of you, you may see a drop of oil, that's perfectly fine. If you see a drop of blood, you would just put pressure on it for another minute or so. If you're going to use your non-dominant hand or your left hand dominant, still totally fine to do. Again, you would sit on something and cross your leg, and then again, wipe off the area with alcohol, let it air dry, okay? And then just like your right thigh, you would just take it just like this. And again, you're just gonna go straight in, you're going to flick back, aspirate, and then you're gonna slowly push in. If you ever by chance put this in, aspirate, and then you see bright red blood in here, which I highly doubt you ever will, you're just gonna pull the whole thing out. You are going to carefully recap this. You're going to take it off. You're gonna put another dark gray one on and then choose a different spot. So either go higher or lower from where you just went um, or switch sides. So again, when you do that aspiration check, you're either gonna see a little bit of pink, you may get an air bubble, or you may get some resistance, but you should not see bright red blood in this fluid chamber right here, okay? If you do, again, you would just take the whole thing out, recap this carefully, take it off, put a new one on, reprime it, and then move to a different one. If you're gonna have your partner give you this injection, again, you can lean over a chair or table, or you can lay flat on a bed. Um, again, you are going in the upper outer corner nowhere near the spine and nowhere near the cheeks okay so what you're gonna do if you're starting on the right side just again your right leg you'll take the pressure off that leg by just leaving the toes on the floor you're gonna take your alcohol wipe that spot and then for safety reasons we have no needle but <laughs> so you're going into this upper outer side okay so once the alcohol is dried all you're going to do in a quick darting motion is just go straight in, okay? Once you're in, you are going to flick back on the syringe a little bit. You don't need to pull it out. As long as there's no bright red blood in there, you're just gonna push down on this slowly. And again, same thing for the other side. You would alcohol that area, you know, and then just go straight in. Again, upper, outer sides, nowhere near the middle, nowhere near the cheeks. As I said, we do like to teach you this in the office just so, you know, we know we're all on the same page. Uh, we all understand nobody wants to do an intramuscular injection, but we want you to have the best chance possible at all of this working. Um, so we will be sending you home with this paper that shows you exactly where to go. We can also use a Sharpie and make boxes of, you know, where your partner will be going. Um, what's really gonna help you with this in the long run um, after each injection is to do heat and massage. So after your injection, you know, after you've done the pressure with the gauze for about a minute or two, then what you wanna do is either use a warm wet washcloth or a heating pad, put it on that area and massage around in a circle for about five minutes or so. Um, that will help the medicine to kind of disperse Otherwise, you're going to end up with like balls of oil underneath your skin. So if you want to, you can ice beforehand. You don't have to. Um, definitely do not ice afterwards because then the oil will kind of congeal under your skin. But ice before, heat after, massage after.